Welcome to a brand new episode of Sequel Rights, the podcast where we take a look at the franchises that make you go, they made how many of those? And we give each and every sequel a fair trial. My name is Justin Camps, and I'm here with... Elizabeth Helley. And... They made how many? <laughs> they made how many of those? Uh, Tyler Hamilton. <laughs> um, well, welcome to a brand new episode, a very fairy tale season we are in right now, where we're talking about a, a Cinderella story, Once Upon a Song. I think uh, our past guest, Heather Johnson, commented on our Facebook, like, this is the first series I've literally said out loud, <laughs> they made how many of those? <laughs> see? Like, see? It happens. Yeah. So. We got a real life spotting sighting of, uh, <laughs> they made how many of those? Um, which is great. And if you are shocked about how many of those they made and you want to tell us, Elis, where can people reach out? Email us at sequelrights at gmail.com or like Heather, you can comment on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Sequel Rights. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, five stars, if you please. It would be very helpful to us. It will help, help us get us through the next, what is it, three more of these? Two more? Two. Two more. Two more. Two more. Two more. <laughs> it's not a two more. <laughs> <laughs> and little did you guys know that, you know, we would be watching the same exact movie as last week. <laughs> yeah. How dare you? There's at least... Literally the same exact movie. There's at least 300% more casual Asian racism. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, uh, let yeah, the other uh, movie just had the one scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see what's happening once upon a song. On DVD, starring Lucy Hale, a tale of two stepsisters. He's not falling for you, he's falling for me. One talented, one Duh! not so much. I can't take it anymore. I'm taking my life in my own hands. A Cinderella story, Once Upon a Song, now available. She can't take it anymore. Am I supposed to know who Lucy Hale is at this yes. point? Yes. Okay. Yeah, by now you should. Maybe when this movie first came out, you could be like, I've never heard of her. She was the winner of American Juniors. Never I, heard of that. Uh, you didn't American. watch that? No. It was like the first year right after American Idol came out. They had American Juniors. Oh, wow. American Juniors is an American Idol for juniors. Yes. Okay. Lucy Hale Jr. And, uh, <laughs> but her biggest role is Pretty Little Liars. She was also in uh -huh. what? Truth or Dare? That Truth or Dare, movie? yeah. Horror movie? Okay. She, she okay. just also recently had a new trailer come out um, for Fantasy Island. She's, she's like oh. the TV show? I don't know if it's based on the TV show or what. It's a Blumhouse. It's another horror movie. Yeah, right? it, but yeah. it's another horror movie, so I don't know if she's like trying to become like... Is she the one that goes, the plane, the plane? <laughs> no, well, I was like, Fantasy <laughs> Island's not a horror movie, but this one definitely is. So. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite social interactions that I've had... Uh, recently was uh, with friend of the show, uh, Joshua Siegel, and he was trying to describe a Dunkin' Donuts commercial that had, uh, oh, I just, Harry Vileche? How do you, I for, just for, forgot how you pronounce his name, the Fantasy Island gentleman. I don't know. The, the plane, but he was basically, yeah. the basically, Her, he was, Harry Leger, maybe? I don't remember. I, feel, I, I, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, but the, the brunt of it was a, it was a story, and the, the punchline of the whole ad was... <laughs> That he wanted the plain donut. So he was like, no, no, I want the plain. Z plain. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's it was, terrible. It was, this is a real it commercial? Was, it was a real commercial that was being <laughs> told to me, and now I'm telling it to you. Why have we had Josh on? Yeah. Secondhand commercial. Let's make him come next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He would For love, no apparent he, reason He'll at love all. this. He'll love this. <laughs> Well, <laughs> we're here talking, uh, if, if you just tuned in, if you just turned the dial to this radio station, <laughs> we're here talking a Cinderella story, Once Upon a Song, the now third film in the series. And uh, I got to say, I, I was joking a little bit about it being the same movie, but it's largely the same it's movie. It's largely the same and movie. And I'm not talking about the fact that it's based on the Cinderella, Cinderella story. <laughs> Uh, there's lots of similarities with the last film. Yes. Which isn't surprising because it's actually the same director of the last film as well. Oh, is it? So it's almost like he was like, you know, uh, what if I could make the same movie again, but slightly better? It's like, did a, did a gypsy curse him and be like, you will make the same movie <laughs> yeah. for the rest of your life? You'll be making another <laughs> Cinderella story <laughs> after the, another it's one. It's the Roland Emmerich curse. <laughs> I don't know if it's just like the fact that this is a few years later, but I think it definitely does look like higher quality. So. Oh yeah, oh, it absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. And, uh, 
you know, this this movie takes a, a step further into the musical side. We had a few songs in the last movie, mm-hmm. but it, this one, yeah, it randomly opened with a dream sequence that was a song. Yeah, and this one opens the exact same way. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> it's like another like music video opening mm-hmm. <laughs> that isn't real, <laughs> uh, which I thought was funny. It's a classic narrative device. But, uh, yeah, as we go through, I think we'll talk about uh, all the differences. But, yeah, it starts off with the same kind of music video. Lucy Hill singing a song. Mm -hmm. She says the word ass right out the gate. I was like, whoa. This isn't your mom's Cinderella story. Yeah, get ready. They aged up the actors, so now (laughs) everything's about sex. Yep. Uh, yeah, which, so is, she's, which they couldn't do because of reasons in the last one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's better if not just for that reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so her, uh, her, funnily enough, her daydream is interrupted by her stepbrother. What? what? Which would have to be her, like, from, like, her, her dad's marriage to... Missy Pyle. Not necessarily. Okay. They right. could, yeah, she could have had a really young kid, I guess. I don't know. She could have had a kid right before she married the... Well, did they say how many years her dad had been dead? No. no. Well, no. then, yeah, it could not... It might not be her full brother. Okay. At least in this one, they were actually step-siblings and not some, like... Yeah, you know, not back to the, like, adopted. my da- my dancer, back to dancer. Back yeah. died. Yeah, I, I love, pretended to be your mom or I something. Lo- I love how we found, like, oh, you know what's kind of like royalty? Pop stars. <laughs> and that, let's, let's explore that a little bit. Yeah. And again. But I do think this one, the, the step-siblings are better than ones we've seen in the past because i i was glad to see a brother just for some change in yeah. pace mm-hmm. and um they kind of have a nice little relationship reckoning towards the end too yeah there, there's uh this movie you know again i was joking about it being the same film and uh a lot of the same elements but i feel like they actually you know tweaked a lot of things to make it better yes <laughs> than the last movie and uh one of those things is that like the the both the stepsister and the stepbrother uh, feel like they have a little bit more full characters, mm-hmm. even though the stepbrother seemed like he stepped out of uh, Problem, Problem Child. Child Seven or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Or like I was time. like, he's like a Home Alone kid. Exactly. He's got everything rigged up. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, a, a tenant of later Cinderella sequels and some adaptations is that one of the stepsisters, usually Anastasia, becomes good or like right. starts to do better. You know. So. Yeah, which I think isn't a bad thing. It's good to see that people can change. People can change. Or that, you know, they're hiding uh, good feelings <laughs> under all their terribleness. But not sequels. That's right. Because <laughs> this plot is the same. We do have Missy Pyle as the stepmother. Again. Wasn't she a stepmother in one of those Home Alones, too? Oh, no, she was just a criminal. Oh, she no, was yeah, the criminal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, Missy Pyle's back to the sequel rights like, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do enjoy that we're just going through, like, some pretty great, you know, female character actors that yeah. are, are coming oh, into yeah. this role to varying degrees of success. Yeah. Uh-huh. If, you, if you guys still don't know who Missy Pyle is, look her up, because she's yep. been in everything. Yep. <laughs> and she's Dodge great. Ball, and she's favorite. hilarious. Yeah. yeah. She's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, and she's very funny in this movie. She's the dean of their fancy ass high school. Where does this take place, even? I, it, it's unclear. Yeah, that's what I was like. Very New, or- New Orleans. It like, seemed like it's probably also Los Angeles. But yeah, I, I don't it's know. implied, but never like actually said. Since the guys in the music, yeah, I'm assuming it's got to be like L.A. Yeah, yeah, but but it was also like a very big like stately yeah. manor like boarding school looking place it weird, like it looked yeah. very east coast yeah that, that it's weird yeah you're right it probably wasn't baton rouge for yeah. the tax breaks yeah <laughs> but um you know people <laughs> record albums there totally Allegedly. yeah <laughs> totally yeah, i think that the one of the best tweaks early on like one of their like oh like maybe this will work a little bit better if is the dad of our prince charming is a record producer Mm-hmm. And he's like sending his kid to the school, being like, "Hey, like he needs to learn how to like find a hit." And yeah, like, like and, and he sucks. Get, yeah, he sucks, and so he's going to curate a talent show, which is contrived, but it's better than a twenty-seven-year-old being like, "I got to get my mojo back. Like, I got to go back to <laughs> my yeah. dance classes." Or I mean, at least it's not like do sports. No, I want right. to do music. It's yeah. like two different types of music. Yeah, yeah. Which I guess is fine. 
And uh, overall, I think all the actors in this movie are way more charismatic than the last film. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to all those people. Yeah. What about Selena? <laughs> I didn't think Selena, she was Selena was great. not old enough. Yeah. <laughs> I do think that, like, although Missy Pyle had a worse, like, like maybe the character was better. Like Jane Lynch had better one one liners for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's of true. Course. That's true. Yeah. yeah. She's think, better with the improv. Well, yeah, I think that is also they just didn't have I well, I think that Missy Pyle's character probably had scripted scenes mm-hmm. and they she probably had just as many moments of gold, but there was actually other stuff happening in the movie. That's right. Where right. Jane, they were just like, Jane Lynch yells something. Yeah. And, like, and, and, and yeah. as they're going, it's like, what? We spent three days shooting this? Like, and, and the B roll that we have of her just shouting things? Yeah, let's just cut back to that. That works better. By the way, if you ever like watch just the pilot of Glee, it's completely different than the rest of Glee. And just every couple minutes, it'll just cut to Jane Lynch in a complete non sequitur, yelling out something horrible at children. <laughs> and then they get rid of that later. But if you ever watch the pilot again, it's really funny. So yeah, yeah that's probably why they got to that. Anyways, back to Missy Pyle. Back to Missy Pyle <laughs> and the setup for this movie. We've got, uh, yeah, like, like Tyler said, Guy Morgan. Big time producer sure. bringing his... Big time British boy. A Simon his... Cowell type. Yeah. Yeah. Bringing his son. Yeah, they even mentioned that he's going to be replacing Simon on... No, replacing Randy. <laughs> oh, Randy, that's right. Yeah. Replacing Randy on American Sorry, Idol. dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> bringing his son, Luke Morgan, to uh, meet with Missy Pyle's character, who's the dean of the school. Mm-hmm. Um, and this uh, sets up our Prince Charming. What is... Yeah. I didn't look up what is the age difference this time. I didn't look not it up. too bad. It didn't seem problematic. It didn't seem bad, yeah. Because she did not seem like she was 12 years old. No. And right. even though a lot of times she does look 12 years old, and I know in Pretty Little Liars, which takes place after this, she, like, basically plays younger and has a relationship with her teacher. Uh, like, yeah. Um, but, yeah, they've had her look pretty age-appropriate here. Yeah, I yeah. Thought. Are there vampires in Pretty Little Liars? What's the deal no, with that show? No, it's murder. <laughs> Secret murder. Pretty Secret. Little li- Lying Vampires. <laughs> So how is it different than Riverdale? It's a murder, and then the person, they keep getting the notes same. from the person who got <laughs> murdered, and then it keeps changing who so the mysterious I, I person was. So I know who was. you murdered last summer? Yeah. Like, the point is, they're pretty. Okay. They're little, <laughs> and they like to lie, so you might call them liars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's basically the, the show. I see. It's like literally four <laughs> girls. It's like eating disorder, sleeps with the teacher, secret gay, and um, like rich. Secret you know, <laughs> yeah. those are their four tropes. <laughs> like, I don't have any money at all. Aren't I cute? <laughs> yeah. I know how we can get out of this. I'll kiss the bouncer while I go get my dad's boat. <laughs> yeah. So she, she plays uh, sleeps with the teacher. Oh. I see. So, yeah. yeah. Um, well... <laughs> I did like that the brother at some point yelled at her, uh, tell me something I don't know, which was the Selena was Gomez say, song yeah. from the first, the second movie. I was going to say that was the one chef's kiss moment of this film. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes! <laughs> and then when I saw that it was the same director, I was like, oh, that scene makes some more continuity. sense continuity. Thank you. <laughs> tell me something I don't know! <laughs> I thought that was amazing. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, the sun is there to find new talent with this showcase. The sun is there to provide light and warmth. And uh, he quickly gets a black sidekick once again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's another That's right. thing that carried over for <laughs> some over reason. Black sidekick and just right into an unfortunate beatboxing scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where the black sidekick just starts beatboxing and then like, oh, what? White, blonde, British boy can also beatbox? Yeah. Also, his name is Mickey O'Malley, and he does actually... Call it out and say, we're rarity in the Irish community. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the beatboxing scene was weird. It's um, unfortunate. Well, he's this, like, wah, 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 this beep, movie beep, beep. carries over. It's one, it's, it's one of the themes that carries over is just like misappropriating other cultures. Oh, my God. This is Ooh, more yeah. guilty. This one comes back uh, in, in full force. And also fish. We get fish. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this one, but they decided that the whole dance needed to be uh, all set around Bollywood. For yeah, this. It, they so double down on the Asian racism that it mm-hmm. is like insane. And it's not just the fact that the dance is Bollywood themed, because that's like, okay, that's one thing, right? Mm-hmm. But 
there's like a 30 minute dance number that it like is not really good Bollywood dancing and it's total appropriation. Um, and like it's the centerpiece of the movie, according yeah. to the choreographer on the special features. Uh, and, and this choreographer, movies- by the way, is in chorus line and she's the choreographer of Captain EO. Oh, Michelle uh, Johnson. Michelle Johnson. Yeah. And, um, but she's certainly not Indian and, no, uh, she's, she's a white lady. And I did pause this at this point and I'm like, Oh, is the director like Indian? Maybe the, Oh, Oh, is the cinematographer? Did you see? Is the editor? Is the writer? Or any of the Is the one actor in that the That one actor is Indian, yeah. but he's half Italian in he's the movie. Half Italian. Yeah. Which who knows what he is in real also, life. Also, did but... you see that he sings the song during the Bollywood dance? Did he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Is, oh, he, a, is he like a famous singer? I don't I don't know. Oh, my God. His name is uh, Man, Manu. Manu uh, Narayan? Yeah. I, okay. I don't, apologies if I. Wow. Um, but also, their outfits are not Indian. Uh, in any way, they're like Middle Eastern. They have head scarves and like veils, which is not what Indian people wear. Yep. Um, the the skirts like of the best friend and them are like cut very like suggestively. That would not be that would not be what you wear to an Indian uh, dance or wedding in this case. And uh, it's just it's crazy. And even like they. Also make like more random bad comments. Like I think the stepmom at one point makes some kind of joke about like you're gonna wish you were in a Filipino prison or something yeah. like that. And it's like what? Do, what's oh, she, to do with she says I've seen better dancing in a Filipino prison. Yeah, like as if she's been to one. Was that is that a reference to like <laughs> those Jones. flash mobs that happened? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Bridget Jones. But wasn't there like some those flash mobs or something oh. that were in a Filipino prison maybe yeah, that yeah, were maybe. big on YouTube? Anyway, possibly it's so crazy and like her f- best friend is Asian, but it's not really like used in any way other than for to the stepmom to of, insult her. Yeah. She can she can also do a bicycle kick. Yeah, she, she's also the one like person in the cast with real dancing talent. Like yeah, she, she, mm-hmm. apparently she's she's she was dancing since she's been she, since she was three. So. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, we talked a little bit about Manu. What's his name in the movie? Manu Nari. Oh, Ravi. Ravi. Slash Tony. <laughs> he is, uh, for some reason, her Indian meditation guru that lives with them. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Which was a weird <laughs> setup. And then it gets even weirder when, like, he tries to, like... He makes that joke about his fourth eye. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why I was like, what is going on in this movie? Every, everyone's <laughs> horny or something. <laughs> Jesus. That joke is like, because I tried to find, I typed in like Cinderella story, Bollywood offensive or whatever. And to try, <laughs> just to make sure, I was like, I'm pretty sure it's offensive, but let me make sure. And then a bunch oh, of people yeah. have like blogged about the dancing and the costume. And then a lot of people, though, on as a side note, were like, what was that joke about the fourth eye? You know, yeah. like, what is this Because he says like, I also have a fourth eye. Want to see it? And she's like, huh? no, I think he says like, let me put it in you. Like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> I don't know it's if he says way more suggestive. Like, it's does like, he say that? I don't know if he says it. Let me put it in you. I thought he said, look into it. I got the feeling I thought he was that like, he was talking you about his brown it? eye, not his I th- snake eye. I feel like he, he's probably talking about well his done. dick. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was all above board. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's just oh it, my it's God. it's a lot of really unfortunate choices, <laughs> and I, like I said, I paused the movie and I was like, "This can't be <laughs> just cause." Like this can't be like it'd be fun. I guess they did they because they did masquerade masks like you know the last two movies. They were like, "Oh, we got to figure out a different way for their faces to then, be covered." Then just make it Arabian Nights, yeah. And like, yeah. Also, again, you can see her face completely. Oh my god, well. you like, sure can. Yeah. Also, they spend and yeah. her hair color. Yeah, they're also <laughs> specifically looking for Luke at the dance. Like, they're yeah, not, they're not. Uh, you know, they're not like, oh gosh, I wonder which one he is. He probably thought she dyed her hair brown for the dance to possibly look more close to like an Indian. Person. Oh no, no one in this movie is thinking that. <laughs> no. I love too. It, there's a moment in the dance where, like, you know, so far it's like. You know, it's a really, it's not a very interesting Bollywood dance, but it looks like what you've seen potentially in a Bollywood dance. And then all of a sudden in the middle of it, like there is a bed on wheels and everyone's like in the bed, like dancing. And then, and then like, Mickey O'Malley is like yeah. humping pillows. He's like, ooh, 
them dancing in this bed, spinning around with ladies. And I thought that I was like, the, the, where this did whole, this bed come this from? This whole dance sequence gets kicked off because the best friend walks over to Missy Pyle and she's like, you can't dance. I heard you want to be a dancer and you fucking suck. And, like, <laughs> yeah. and she's like, oh, yeah. And then it starts as a dance off and then it just keeps going. I think I challenged you to a dance off. <laughs> yeah. And then it goes, yeah, it goes on for literally 10 minutes. And then it just cuts back. Uh, apparently, uh, Lucy Hill had hidden a guitar very far away. Yeah. Because- and this, this, yeah. <laughs> well, and also, this is another, this is, again, where this is the same movie as the last one. We again have a character being like, hey, can you play this? I'm going to go request a song for the DJ. Yeah. <laughs> it's this Bollywood track sung by, uh, you know, the actor in the film. No. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, okay. We've like been jumping around, but mm-hmm. the, the plot is that. She is trying to be discovered. They hear the demo, but the stepmom passes it off as her daughter's demo. The daughter cannot Bev. sing. She's awful. She can't sing at all. And uh, the stepmom then forces Lucy Hale to, uh, you know, like lip sync se- secret voice or whatever, uh, or she's going to ruin the career of the best friend, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which I guess was like sort of an interesting twist to why she was actually going along with all this because a lot of times you're like why is cinderella even yeah and it's usually just like well she has nowhere to go and she's been beaten down over the years but this was more like okay that's actually a good reason to go along with it I yeah guess. otherwise your friend's chances of juilliard are gonna right. be right yeah spoiled um but you know we get we get the classic like oh uh the reason you can't go to the dance is you got to watch your crazy brother who poops and stuff <laughs> and which throws is, earthworms into smoothies. Which is a fucking weird uh, plot point. But uh, um, she asks Ravi to watch over, Ravi Tony, to watch over. Because she uh, discovers uh, Tony eating a bunch of pizzas. Yeah, and watching football yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, turns out he's totally faking the whole thing. Yeah, yeah and then she, and then he's basically admits that, like, oh yeah, uh, you, your stepmom came up to me in a KFC and asked if I was a guru. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he immediately went into the Indian accent. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So, Which is just like, what, it makes it even. Then why do you live with her? She, yeah, she's a terrible, terrible person. Um, he, so yeah, he agrees to babysit. Yeah, yeah. which lets uh, Katie. Uh, who is the our Cinderella in this movie? Mm-hmm. Go to the ball, mm-hmm. and the Bollywood. Uh, the Bolly. Oh God, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I hope that's not why they decided. Yeah, they were like dance ball. ball. I'm pretty sure Bolly. it was to appropriate the Bollywood, males, which are not Indian, but you know. yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, then we get a little bit of a uh, not not necessarily a full callback, but maybe a callback to the first movie where. Uh, Katie and Luke go out into a very lovely looking outside section of the dance where, like Tyler said, she's hidden a guitar. She's hidden a guitar. <laughs> El Mariachi style, it's full of guns, and she murders <laughs> it. <laughs> no, instead she sings no a lovely tune. <laughs> he doesn't recognize her, even though he's looking into her eyes the entire time. You see yeah. her full face. I, I could say, like, okay, maybe... You might not notice her if you didn't know her that well. And also, I guess her hair is covered completely. You can tell what color it is. Yeah, you're right. You're right. No, you should, he should know. He should know. <laughs> it's crazy. But, uh, especially because her stepsister has a very high and grating voice. That's true. That's true. The stepsister, by the way, has been in like 20 Hallmark movies, like Prince Upon a Time and like stuff like that. You know, like seriously. <laughs> prince Upon a Time. Yeah. What's about a prince? Prince. Seriously. Time like Christmas travel. The spread. Prince. The fresh <laughs> once of time air. It's like. <laughs> Welcome to Princeton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Prince of Princeton. <laughs> Princeville. Population U. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Those are all great titles for Hallmark films. Freddie Stroma, the the prince of this movie, he was in that H.G. Wells show, that time travel show that was on ABC. Oh, yeah. Oh, what was that called? It was. I called... think it was called Time After Time. Actually, oh. I'm pretty sure. Or I could be wrong, but I think that's what it was called. I don't, I don't remember. I uh, he was also in um, Pitch Perfect, Harry Potter, and was he Unreal. male voice number four? <laughs> in what pitch, pitch perfect? perfect no yeah. he was like the radio dj that oh. took a shirt off so he is better than Bruce <laughs> Seeley. <laughs> yeah oh yeah god yeah <laughs> i Ugh. knew it i knew it um so she sings a beautiful song um mm-hmm. but gets interrupted by her friend 
uh, because during the dance, uh, you know, Missy Pyle's character uh, earlier in the film, she mentioned that she had a cinnamon colonic. <laughs> yeah. And then she has an there's accent. there's a lot of toilet humor in yeah. this movie. Uh, yeah. There's that the little brother's talking about uh, about uh, taking a shit everywhere, and uh, the I guess the acorn doesn't fall too far from the tree here. And that Missy Pyle has an accident uh, after this, <laughs> the girl, this girl, racially insensitive Bollywood dance sequence. A girl behind her is like, Liter- does someone smell cinnamon? Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, it's like literally <laughs> let's let's do something offensive and then shit on it. <laughs> I did like yeah. that the little brother was sort of equally horrible to everyone, like, yeah. not just Katie. I was like, he was like a chaotic good or chaotic yeah. neutral. Yeah, he's kind of good. Yeah, he went out, at, the, at, the, at, the at, the, at the end. He went out. He goes out of his way. But yeah, we get to see Lucy Hale running around with nothing but a. a oh, I forgot about an yeah. appropriately placed hedge and a doormat. This is what I was talking about. I was like, why is she naked in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> because it, she has to wear the doormat because she's she's Cinderella. a literal she's doormat. doormat. Yeah, yeah. I, guess. Uh, I I did find that like funny. I guess, and it like it wasn't weird. No, yeah, it was. Well, okay, yeah. It was a little weird. I it was thought. weird. Based it, it, on the previous films. Yes, based on the previous films, it was definitely weird. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, and then they're like, of course he was flirting with me. I was naked. <laughs> I guess it's good that she at least recognized that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that there is there is some of that in this movie where it's like he goes back and forth between the two of them. And like they, they, they at least do the character development where uh, I forget the guy's name. Luke. Uh, Luke. Where Luke has a moment sitting down at the piano with Bev. And that, like, like he thinks that, oh, like, she's kind of, like, is physically attracted to her. And then, like, so he's not, he like, you know, he has an attraction to both of them, and he's going back and forth. And once he finds out the talent, then it goes overboard. But it's not, like, uh, at least they, they, they set the groundwork for him to have some indecision. Yeah. Or, mm-hmm. you know, of, of having an attraction to her to begin with. They make the great decision with this movie to make it not end halfway through the film. <laughs> so, like, at it's the a very dan- good decision at the dance, they're not immediately like the next day, like, "Oh my god, we're a couple." <laughs> yeah. uh, and interestingly, at, uh, in this version of the film, she doesn't really leave anything behind. The things, she, the thing she leaves behind is her voice, I guess, technically, right? Well, like Ariel? Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was about to do that. I wasn't confident in my singing. You're, you're more great. confident than me, Tyler. <laughs> well, I mean, like, she doesn't drop a Microsoft Zune 2. Yeah. <laughs> she, doesn't, yeah, yeah. she doesn't leave a shoe. Oh, my iPod Nano. <laughs> I guess she did throw her demo in the dad briefcase, but that's not really. Yeah, that's not quite yeah. the same. So, like, the rest of the movie, he's, like, looking for her voice instead of, like, some physical object, which uh-huh. I thought was kind of interesting. Um, I don't disagree. And there's a lot of tropey hijinks. I forget which classic work invented this trope, but the I'm pretending, helping you pretend to be C- me. Cyrano. Cyr- Cyr- yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm listening and which telling is, you what to which, say. Which yeah. lends itself into to this type of movie of the hidden identity. And so, yeah, basically, like, she gets coerced into coaching Bev through dates of writing songs. So it's a lot of the whispering in the ear. The first time that I was introduced to this was Roxanne, the Steve Martin movie with the big nose. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the, like, I'll tell you how to do this. But, like... The thing that's good about this is there's classic tropes and there's actually some funny moments and whatever it is, and it's done with smartphones in a way that's like, okay, fine, Mm -hmm. Um, is that the evil stepsister shows some fragility in in this and yeah. shows some like they're like she's a human being like they allow her a beat to be like how do you think it makes me feel that i have to like rely on this yeah then she just goes b- back to being straight up evil but at least there's a <laughs> moment where it's like okay like you're you're an actual character you're a human being yeah and you mm-hmm. feel like she also she also kind of actually likes this guy um right. and like out of all the stepsisters we've seen so far she gets the furthest Yes. Uh, in in this fake relationship with Luke. Yeah, I mean, normally the stepsisters are literally cartoon characters yeah. Yeah. or just clowns, you know, and the stepmother's pushing them out, being like, do this, do that, blah, 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 yeah. and, and they're just like, hey. And they never have a chance. And they do crazy yeah. cartoon things, like you said, yeah. Yeah, but this one, um, yeah, she's like a real person. Both both step siblings are real people and yeah. show moments of, like, vulnerability and character development, so it's kind of mm-hmm. nice. Yeah, there's a great, um, so, like, they basically, she's, she sings, uh, Bev sings, Katie's song 
And then they, Luke and, and Bev kiss. And Katie <gasps> comes rushing in and be like, does anybody want pie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love pie. Which, oh, is, pie. which is a universal thing to barge into a room with. It doesn't matter <laughs> what it is. Funeral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> does anybody want wedding, pie? Wedding. Hey, a funeral, <laughs> there might be pie. Mm. And if there isn't, you can go it's, get some. It's unclear if there was even pie in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, um, by this point, the brother is actually backing Katie up because he has seen yeah. he has the whole house rigged with cameras, and he's like, "Wow, he's my a mom real creep. is a, he's a real creep. Like yeah. he straight up says, my mom's a bitch. Like, yeah. what the hell? Why are they having to do this?" And I mean, he eventually helps them with the earpiece, but you don't really know why because, like, he doesn't even like his his sister. Uh, she was she was uh, blackmailing well, him. Uh, over the surveillance, because yeah, like, the mom didn't know about the surveillance. Yeah, but he's he does he does uh, straight up say that like uh, Katie is the only person who mm-hmm. knows his birthday, and that's the nice the right. nice moment. She's like, "Why are you helping me? You hate me." And he's like, "No, I." He's like, you. "Are you kidding?" Yeah. 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 Um, that had that that scene had one of the like the funniest line for me because. He's like, once they decide they're going to turn on the mom, he's like, I'm going to go poop in her bed. Yeah. <laughs> they're just like, um, don't do that. I don't, what's wrong with you? This kid is fucked up. He's poops everywhere. Uh, there's this continuing joke about how, like, uh, Missy Powell's character thinks that they have a cat, apparently. Right. Oh, yeah. The cat pooped in the closet again. And then Lu- Lucy Hale's like, uh, we don't have a cat. How many times am I going to tell you? Well, if, if the other movie holds true, they lost a dog for six months. <laughs> That's true. There are some things repeating here. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, true. so the. The Indian guy and the son are kind of like basically the animals of the Cinderella tale, mm-hmm. which we haven't gotten that much. Yeah, that's true. I also, you also just remind me of things. Speaking of things repeating, it's uh, just like, hey, vacuum things that don't need to be vacuumed. Yes, I saw. That. <laughs> I thought that same thing. It's like vacuum the driveway, vacuum the chandeliers. Yeah, she's like, you said you wanted the chandeliers to sparkle. Uh, what well, vacuuming with the tube is not. Bad for chandelier. That's, That's what you true. Would it do. just looks ridiculous. No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, it looks equally ridiculous as because she's like also like standing you so would, far away. No, you use a feather duster, but you could use a vacuum to get like spider webs and stuff down. That's true. I but, suppose. Yeah, the scene is hilarious because she's I using haven't polished many chandeliers. She's using sure. like a you know a vacuum that has like the longest tube. Yeah, you've very ever long seen, tube, and She's standing yeah. so far away that it seems like you wouldn't be able to get any precision with it. But uh, I think this is around the time where Missy Pyle says my favorite line in the movie of "Have you seen my Gandhi knife?" <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> she, yeah, she's her collectible Gandhi knife. Yeah, her collectible <laughs> Gandhi knife, which is. I guess in retrospect, that must have been before the Bollywood thing, because it's like that's funny out of context. Is her because it's a joke about her ignorance, but it could be in the color of this movie's overall <laughs> ignorance. Yeah, there's so many, and there's just like so many asides of a random stuff. Like there's a a black girl in the school, or I don't know what she is, but she's a ethnic yeah. girl that is like obsessed with him in a really weird and awkward way. There's like a weird assistant principal that is like, there's like a Benny Hill montage yeah. in yeah. this movie. Yeah. Like, um, Benny Hill, Scooby Doo. There's, there's a shot before, like the, the, the assistant principal is like, she's supposed to be like an uptight, like, I guess, assistant principal she has like her hair up in a bun and glasses and like the, it's a pan through of the ball before like the, you show all of them in their super suggestive bollywood outfits she's like no touching no kissing no texting and it's like well did you see what you gave all of them to wear because like <laughs> yeah. you're going against that right now <laughs> yeah they were wearing like belly dancer outfits and yeah. that's not oh god okay yeah. anyways uh there's in the great tradition of <laughs> acapella groups having horrible pun names there is a all black acapella group called the oral majority yeah and they're credited in the credits as such and so i was like oh is this a real group don't google it people it's a <laughs> porn series <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense yeah um, that's did. another weird uh, situation in the movie where oh, yeah. there's like multiple scenes where people audition for Luke in the bathroom. Yep. Yep. Which I was another, that was another moment where I was just like, what is going on in this movie? Every <laughs> member of this acapella group saddles up next to Luke at the urinals. <laughs> yeah. And they break, they break the code. They start yep. singing, they start singing a song and interacting with the people next to him. Super weird. And then, the, and then later in the movie, there's a band with a chainsaw. Yep. 
Which is unclear if it's a real chainsaw or fake or no, what. No, it's fake because when they finally perform at the talent show, he pretends to cut off the other I was going to say, head. yeah, there's a yeah. scene where he's holding it right over somebody. Yeah. But yeah, the chainsaw <laughs> is like an instrument, which I guess is like an interesting musical that idea, is, maybe. But it is, it, it, That was funny to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty funny. Because, yeah, ostensibly Luke is still trying to find people for this talent show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and they try to put some moments that make him a redeeming character, sort of like what we had with Chad Michael Murray in the first movie, but it just doesn't like doesn't play as well in this movie. Like we said, we had the moment where he like gives her her coat because she's naked outside. There's a moment where he teaches little brother to play a couple chords and they play like a little song together. But I don't know, it just didn't because he is like going between the two girls and so stupid about that, like. The moments that they try to make him be like, oh, he's actually a nice person, kind of fell flat to me. Not like the moments that Chad Michael Murray had. Oh, I, I like the moment with uh, the stepbrother uh, kid because he was so just like fucking around like, oh, there's another person I'm going to fuck with. Yeah. Man, play my guitar. And then as soon as he was like, oh, I can, you know, as soon as Luke is like, I can teach you some chords, the you know, his reaction of just like. Oh wait, really? I thought you were here to see someone else. Like, yeah, I thought you just like you just dismissed me like everybody else. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, oh, yeah. she can like Bev can wait, like whatever. She's I, stupid. I guess I didn't <laughs> have that issue because it just seemed like that. Like, I just I guess I bonded the idea of like they're actively deceiving him and mm. like like she, and she's with her help, so like she's also throwing him off the scent. Like, I think that I think that her being blackmailed makes it work in a way that's that's still. A straight to DVD. It's Cinderella really weird movie, too but. because I feel like there's a. De- are there any deleted scenes? There were no deleted scenes. Sorry. Because I feel like there must be, unless I just missed it. There's like a scene that takes place off camera where he tells her like you're like two different people to me to Bev. Oh yeah, she because just she, relays Bev that relays that to Katie yeah. and she says he doesn't understand why I'm so sensitive and artsy one moment and then the next moment I'm in histrionics and I hate history or whatever. Yeah. That's like yeah. the joke, but Which I thought was but funny. I I would have liked to see that scene on screen. Yeah. I don't know. Uh I did want to talk a little bit uh about um that scene at the at the uh the dinner scene yes <laughs> with because i think like you know we we're talking a little bit about how i feel like the acting is a little bit of a step up on this one and uh like that scene you were just mentioning 3D. with bev yeah <laughs> step up 3d uh with bev where she gets to show a little bit of emotion i think that megan park does a great job in this scene too mm-hmm. with the comedy of this whole situation where she's like trying to read texts from katie and respond <laughs> in real time to this conversation and she says stuff like you know, Luke asks her, oh, man, what are you listening to? Or like, what's your favorite band right now? And she's like, oh, you know, right now I think I'd have to think. And she looks down and she's like, oh, Moose is really good. Yeah. And he's and like, I was like, Moose from Step Up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Their universes are shared. Yeah, oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> and, of course, she was supposed to say Muse, but I thought that was a really funny thing. <laughs> yeah. We just gloss over this, and at some point Katie's like, learn how to read. But, like, I think Beth might actually have a learning disability. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like she like switches letters in a few of the words. Yeah. Like moose is obviously a mispronunciation, but there's a few other ones where she like actually mm-hmm. transposes some yeah. letters. And I love um that, you know, like Katie drops her phone in her coffee and so the whole thing is messed up. And so uh Bev is like Oh gosh, my grandma, she's, she has to go to the bathroom. I should probably go to the bathroom too. <laughs> and she goes and like in the bathroom, they have this argument and she decides that like, fuck it. I, I'm, I'm smart. Uh, <laughs> I, she's I like, can I can it. talk good. No, and she's like, he's in love with me. He likes me. Like I, I got this. And she's like, I talk good. Yeah. <laughs> and she goes back out and, uh, he asked him, ask her one question and she's like, Oh, my grandma died. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> and immediately leaves. And I love that she just in that instant, like you can see on her face, like, no, nah, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he asked her all about like, uh, like who's your favorite classic, classic composer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought that was actually a pretty fun scene from her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, there was genuine jokes in this movie. Yeah. And, uh, it all leads up to what I thought was going to be another show at the Los Angeles Theater. <laughs> it really looked that way. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for it to be like Los Angeles Theater because it's like that same kind of like outside the, the spotlights going. In the pantheon of fake talent shows and performances, though, this is probably one of the better ones. I mean, if like yes. this is also another thing, I guess, that is carrying through because we had the fake uh, pep rally mm-hmm. performance in the first movie and then we had the 
just god awful fake talent show of the last movie. They couldn't even afford a whole soundstage for that one. Yeah. yeah. With this one, it's like, okay, the oral majority, you know, is very well, talented. The chainsaw guy is funny, you know, like they, know. they set them up with a bit throughout the movie. Yeah. So yeah. like we got to see these acts and like we got to kind of care about them. And, yeah, they like, weren't just out of left field, like, yeah. oh here's a ballet dancer and right. you also know. I don't know if you um looked into the songwriters and producers on this movie, but uh they were responsible for um, High School Musical 2, the music, the songs in High School Musical 2. Oh, wow. So, uh, it's pretty good music in High School Musical 2, I got to say. <laughs> like, the, the, two, the, the two songwriters wrote Bet On It and some of the other songs. <gasps> Bet so, On yeah, It. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that's why, like, through this whole movie, the songs, I'm like, these are actually, like, no, the songs are, The songs are pretty good. They're, yeah, they're pretty forgettable, but they're, they're catchy. Super pop. Yeah. yeah, they're super poppy, but they sound, like, competent, you know? Whereas, whereas, like, I don't, I don't, Drew Seeley, like, the song they sing at the end of the last movie, I was like, not great. These ones actually sound like mostly modern pop songs, which I thought was good. Like, you actually believe when they're like, wow, that's a really good song. Like, I want to produce your, you're like, yeah, you probably would. Like, even when she makes up a song that's like being mean about the stepmom, it's pretty funny and like cute. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and like there was a scene where uh, she's doing the Cyrano thing about writing lyrics for a song, and then he's like, he's improvising, and like even that scene I think works really well, uh, even though it's kind of like, oh yeah, like that's good, that's good, like yeah. I'm coming up with the words, but like it just shows that like I don't know, like yeah, that that they they jive creatively in a way that that that's all he's seeing and he's kind of blinded by it, mm-hmm. but uh, it. <sighs> It makes it seem like that they're actually good lyrics, and I believe that in that scene. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I've never written a song. <laughs> no, I, I was surprised. I thought the songs were actually pretty good in this movie. Um, and, and, you know, like la- the last film, like you have Tell Me Something I Don't Know, which is like the one song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess that was a hit song. I mean, like- <laughs> I guess I have had that song in my head this past it, week. Yeah, yeah. I guess if you're going to. I thought about it walking to Starbucks the other day. Song in the <laughs> title. Of yeah, your movie. That's right. You better make sure that they're good. Yeah. No, they stepped it up. Um, 3D. <laughs> Speaking of 3D, um, <laughs> Matt Lintz, the kid that plays um, the brother. Victor, uh, Victor Van Victor, Ravensway. Victor, he uh, is in Piranha 3 Double D. Ooh. Oh, that's the one I haven't seen. <laughs> I actually haven't seen that one either. Uh, he's also in uh, Free State of Jones, Pixels, and he has large roles on Walking Dead and The Alienist. Ooh, nice. So, yeah, that's the child star check-in. Good for him. Um, so, yeah, we kind of end the movie with this big showcase. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it actually brings back um, one of the things that we've decided, I guess, is a theme. <laughs> or what I think is a theme of the these movies. Public humiliation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what I like about this movie. Clown. Clown. <laughs> Clown. <laughs> <laughs> what I like about this movie is that the public humiliation is turned to be on the stepsister. Yes. Who it should be in the first place. Yep. Um, instead of our Cinderella character. Yeah, she was never really publicly humiliated in this movie. Yeah, Other she wasn't. naked that one time. But right, but it wasn't in wasn't. front of all yeah. your friends. Or and whatever. that was clearly not her fault. Like, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> This this one like that public humiliation scene happens to Bev instead of uh, to Katie, which I mm-hmm. which I thought was another like change that you know th- the other films I don't feel like the stepsisters got a ton of comeuppance or if it was it was like super cartoony like yeah they were I guess they were humiliated by their horrible dancing at that last talent yeah, show yeah they were right. humiliated in front of strangers in the car wash at the other movie oh yeah like, the right. hot wax but it's like you know I don't know I, this was more of a like and, sting and, 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 it's, and there was sting because like you could tell that there was a human in there too but like at the same time she went wrong she went along with an extortion and a deception yeah it was and and practiced a very detailed dance number yeah uh, right. That then, she, and it's kind of funny that um, that it's a big deal that she's lip syncing at this talent show while she's doing this big dance routine because in any concert like this, that probably would have been lip synced anyway, right. even if it was your own track, like yeah. if you're Britney Spears or you know whoever, like you probably, Ashley Simpson. yeah, um, like I doubt that this talent showcase is like. W- SNL where it's like it must be live you right. know like I, they, they probably if she's doing that much dancing it probably would have been lip synced yeah but then they just got caught got yep. a, made a whole big deal out of they it they got booed like Drake at Camp Walk and yeah <laughs> oh god I, I saw that video yeah. yikes, yikes. 
Uh, don't watch it. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I, you know, so th- the whole movie builds up to finally the reveal of who the real person behind the voice is. And I think that maybe, maybe because it's taken the entire film to this point um, for it to happen, like I really liked how – uh, this played out and like, I felt like it was, it felt more emotional than the last film. Like the way that, you know, Luke finds out who her voice is and then is like immediately like, you're awesome. I got to do everything I can to like show that this is you. And I loved you on American juniors. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And the way it builds and like, you know, she's backstage with Mike and then he's got Mm. the camera on her and then she gets to come out stage. I thought it was actually kind of like a little moving in that moment. I know. I think it's, I think for a movie that I I didn't expect that. Like I said, with like the, the lyrics, you could tell he's falling in love with like whoever that person is. And it Mm. doesn't matter what she looks like or what it is, you know, like, I mean, he thinks it's that girl, but it's like to him, it's like, it's not like, wait, what? It's like, Oh, like okay, great. That's you. Fine. Yeah. Like, 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 like I can do everything to do to support you, and 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 the fact that the stepsister is actually like we said, kind of human, makes it him seem less like a pathetic patsy yes. that's being duped. You know, right. we're kind of like, oh, okay. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So. And um, yeah, uh, yeah. I just really liked how that 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 played mm-hmm. out. I think it was one of the you know, better set up um, reveals of who Cinderella is in the series so far. Well, and I also think that, that we find out that Luke has a secret as well, where he's made an album uh, that, that his dad thinks he just produced, but he actually created the whole album. Mm -hmm. And uh, Katie was a huge fan of that band. And then, so when she finds that, she's like, Oh my God, like that's crazy. And like, that's their kinder. Like they have that thing in common. Yeah. Uh, Like, like, Oh, like I'm a secret pop star and Oh, you're a secret pop star. (laughs) And like, but it, it just does it, the movie actually does the legwork to yeah. to pay off the things that it's trying to pay off. Right, and it, and like it's it's not like a super crazy romance where like he, he you know I, I like that throughout the film you get the sense that like he he he's seen Katie a few times and that he kind of likes her personality from the few interactions right. that they've had. That it makes sense that like oh he finds out she's the voice and they make out immediately. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. It's not it's not like in some movies where like it's just a magic moment and right. they're in love immediately. He's like had interactions and you see that like he's kind of flirting with her in these mm-hmm. moments, even though he's also flirting with Vev. Yeah, mm-hmm. which I thought was good. Mm-hmm. Which a uh, I've met a teenage boy. They, that's that's what they would do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you've met a teenage boy. Yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, um, you've made some mistakes in life and love? <laughs> I'm shocked. Uh, I also love the moment where uh, Ravi Tony straight up kills Missy Pyle's character. <laughs> With his fourth eye. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out it was his Beretta. <laughs> There's a scene where, uh, yeah, Missy Pyle, whose name is Gail. I don't know if we've ever said it. Um, but she's like, stop everything. Turn off the power. She can't know yeah. that it's her voice. And she, like, pulls the plug, I guess, on the soundboard. Um, and then Ravi comes up and, like, grabs that plug. And he's, she's, like, looking the other way. And he goes, like, hey, Gail. And he's, like, clear. And, like, shocks her with it. And I was, like, that probably would have killed her. I mean, she yeah. shot backwards. I don't yeah. think that's good for your body. <laughs> or for your chakras. Your, your, <laughs> your chakras. Get it? That's terrible. I, I, <laughs> I knew what I was doing. Did you write this movie? No. <laughs> to the to um Bev's credit, once the you know, the jig is up, she's like, all right, you know. Yeah. The, the stepmother tries to keep it going and she's just like, forget it, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm done well, yeah, with this. Yeah, they want to do this anyway. Yeah, there's a whole uh, mid credit scene where that happens. Oh. Yeah. I didn't see that. What? You stop? It's like two minutes after the movie. No, not even two minutes. It was like. So you know this director really likes doing credits where they like start playing a scene and they like pause and then yeah. some title comes right. up so he did that again but there's also a credit scene where she's been sent back to the tennessee fair or something wherever she was singing oh yeah, yeah. missy pile yeah missy pile yeah and then yeah the the i mean the mid-credit scene is the one where she chases after guy when he's leaving. oh i thought that was in the movie no i'm I pretty forgot. sure that's mid-credit. okay anyways yeah she chases after him and, um, and she's like she's still like who cares like jessica simpson sang without a voice you know like yeah, all that stuff. So, yeah. yeah. there's a random dig to jessica simpson Cool. 
But the movie basically ends with a music video and then continues the music videos through the creds. I again watch this movie on the train, and this time today there was a <gasps> gang altercation happening <gasps> while I was watching. It. Oh god! <laughs> was it like a West Side Story style dance? Nope. Uh, as soon as they started <laughs> talking about killing each other, I switched cars. Okay, <laughs> yay! Oh boy! Oh boy! Yeah. And then I said, "Hey, conductor." I'm trying to watch my story. Why? <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> my Cinderella stories. <laughs> and these, no, it was, I, it was, it was, it was just like, oh, this is a fun juxtaposition. Um, but the trains are safe. It's fine. Yikes! That's train talk. That's train talk. Train our, talk. Our with sub, Tyler. sub podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean that. But that's pretty much the end. It kind of just ends on a showcase. They live happily ever, ever after. He says that he's gonna. We're making an album. Her album. Yeah. And everyone's excited. Her yep. friend's going to Juilliard, probably. I don't know. You get a full ride to Juilliard, even oh, though you didn't get to dance. Yeah, the, the, uh, the scene where she does chase after him, he does uh, say that he's going to be talking to the school board and having her disbarred or whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh, discredited. Oh. Speaking of that, that was another weird scene that I thought was kind of funny when the... the um, the the choir teacher or whoever and her are yeah. arguing about like how many texts it would take for her to get her fired. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, well one tweet and a retweet. Yeah, it was just a oh, weird. There, yeah, the way this movie uses tweet scene. as a verb is like, oh everybody's tweeting about it. It's just like that's how kids talk, right? Yeah, yeah. In two thousand, no, like I think that like, it was it, it felt very screenwritery. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think. I don't know this. Like, I think it ends up being a wash because this one is better than the last one. But all that racist shit just kind of yeah. Well, it way down. Let's see. Oh yeah, sorry. I well, r- racist shit kind of describes. I mean, I want to say how many racist shits, uh, but uh, but that's that's just a little bit too blue. I think. Um, how many? Uh, oh, I got it. How many uh, strategically placed hedges? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you, I thought you were gonna go with doormats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll do doormats. How many strategically placed doormats would you give Cinderella story? Once upon a song. Um, God, I, we have to re- write down what we say because I can't even remember what I said last week. Um, yeah, go for it. I, I yeah, but I, I guess I'll give this one a, a four. I don't remember what I said. I don't remember Selena. what I said, but that's what I'm. I'm yeah, a four because like I. Like I said, the story this time is a lot better, mm-hmm. and the music is better, and the actors are better. But my God, who let this Bollywood thing get past? It's not like this thing was created in 1911. It's 2011. Yeah. You know, like it's just awful and so not even close to appropriate. I it just yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um. I also. I mean. Yeah. Despite all the horrible you know, racist and cultural, cultural appropriation stuff. Do you think it's a, if it's a better movie than the last one? I think I gave the last one a three and, uh, yeah, I guess I'll give that one a four too. I was going to maybe say five, but I don't want to seem like I'm, you know, endorsing the Bollywood (laughs) dance. Um, so I'll give it a four. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting that it's the same director and it seems like he kind of got a chance to remake the movie, the last movie that he did. And I think that the tweaks they made to the characters and actually giving, you know, maybe maybe the fact that it wasn't two stepsisters uh, gave it a chance to have the one stepsister have like a bigger part mm-hmm. and more of a character. And um, yeah, the, we haven't had a stepbrother before. And so yeah, they not that. only changed the gender, but they really put them up far apart in age. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I feel like a lot of the changes along the way um, really make it a better film than the last one. And if you're going to watch two of them, I, or only watch one of them, uh, I would say to watch this one. Out of the these out of last these two. last two sequels. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, out of the straight to DVD versions. Yeah. Um, I am also going to go with a four, 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 four. Mm. Um, oh, Consensus. four strategically placed hedges. I apologize. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, well, and, oh, doormats. Four doormats. Oh, right. doormats. Doormat clothes. Doormat. Uh, yeah, I think that it's not just the Bollywood dance. Like, it's just like mm-hmm. some form of racial insensitivity has unfortunately been a through line through yeah, these why? movies for a really weird reason. Um, and I don't think that it's, 
I, I maybe a part of it is just like 2019 is a lot is a lot different than 2011. Like yes, I think that we sure. we are way more sensitive to things, and and I think that that's enlightening and not disparaging. So I, I don't think that that it's it's us calling these things out now is saying anything poor on the people at the time. I think that we are just in retrospect, it looks bad, and that's also okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if I'd make these choices. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I think that on the second playthrough of the same movie for the Cinderella story, <laughs> the director does a far better job of crafting characters and uh, building the plot. Deciding not to end it halfway through is a good, <laughs> yeah, good step. I uh, still had a little bit of like, oh yeah, I forgot about the showcase in this movie, <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't like, wait a minute, there's still forty, 40 minutes, minutes left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, uh, you didn't feel like you were watching a molestation the entire time, <laughs> right? Yeah. They're they're age appropriate, and uh, they seemed like that there was actual chemistry, mm-hmm. which was uh, you know necessary for a story like this. Well, yeah, uh, I mean that's going to bring us to the end of uh, Once Upon a Song, Cinderella story, and next week we're going to move into the historically terrible year of 2016 mm. uh, with a Cinderella story if the shoe fits. Yeah, I don't know, you guys. You think that she's finally going to leave a shoe behind? No. Probably not. I, it's going to be a fashion school situation is my guess. Oh, I think that that's probably oh, true. Oh, if the shoe fits. Yeah, but why would they say if the shoe fits if the shoe's not going to fit in the movie? It's Flare like, it. Maybe, maybe <laughs> it's like a... Um... The shoe needs to fit, okay? <laughs> maybe... You need to lose weight in your foot. Maybe she's an old-timey cobbler. <laughs> <laughs> she like, goes like Daniel Day-Lewis to Italy and learn how to yes, make shoes. Yes, that would be great. And then when she puts on the shoes, she becomes the person that was the shoes, and then she's Adam Sandler trying to have sex with somebody else's <laughs> Oh, <wife>. no. <laughs> is that what that movie's about? Yes. My yes. God. <laughs> yeah. No, that movie's about, there's, the movie's about, I've never watched it, but that movie's about, who, like, he's a cobbler. That happens in the movie. Yeah, and whoever wants, whoever shoes he puts on, he becomes them, and there's a sequence where he goes to this guy's house, and his wife is showering, and it's like, ah, uh, I can't get in the shower without taking my shoes off. <laughs> what a dilemma. I don't know. What should I do? And then oh that man, God. that man who directed that movie also made Spotlight. <laughs> that's, that's what? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, I look forward to seeing if the shoe fits next week. Maybe the answer will be no. No, I hope Adam Sandler's in it. <laughs> <laughs> I can see who's in it right now, and it's exciting. Uh, but we'll leave you guys to think about that for next week. But in the meantime, um, if you once upon the song and want to let us know about it. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Eli's <laughs> weird. Oh man. Uh, please. Uh, whatever. Talk to us on social media. <laughs> Chat us up. Carrier Twitter, pigeon. Instagram, Facebook, at Sequel Rights, or send us an email. We are mercifully almost done with the series so we need suggestions for future franchises uh, almost the done holidays, you know, the, ho- the holiday times yeah. that's right uh, sequel rights at gmail.com is our email address uh, please uh, rate and review us on Apple Podcast five stars if you can uh, how many stars would it take us to get us fired <laughs> <laughs> three stars that's in a retweet pictures. yeah just kidding Anyways, we'll see you guys next week when we get to finally find out if the shoe fits or not. There's a little secret I would like to tell you. There's a book of lies I know they'll try to sell you. And they'll try and they'll try to convince you to buy. You need them. So the next time you're down, look inside. There's nothing better